Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Um, to start off with a little bit of background, I'm not sure how familiar everyone in the room is with Mendeley, but the uh, basic and general idea of where it came from was PhD students who were frustrated with the process um, of the overflow of information that they had to deal with. And so they were actually inspired by what the music industry was doing with music files and MP3s and the way that they were able to set up this organized library of them and then give recommendations of genres or music that they might want to listen to. And so Mendeley, the founders of Mendeley thought, how could we adopt this and do this with PDFs and research? And so what this means to users, I'm just gonna go through kind of like the life cycle of how Mendeley's pieces of the software actually work. So in talking about how Mendeley uh, helps researchers work smarter, essentially what you do is you download the um, desktop software, which is a cross-platform free software um, for any of your computers or um, mobile devices, iPad, Android, and iPhone we have currently, and essentially what you do is you throw all of your documents important to you in your library, and what Mendeley is going to help you do is organize these documents and give you the tools um, to be able to cite and write and have um, an internal PDF viewer um, and give you some helpful tools that way. And so I just want to quickly show you what this actually looks like live demo style. So if we have um, your Mendeley desktop, if I've opened it, you'll notice that it's three pane kind of UI um, interface. And on the left, you have the kind of big grains of detail. So your library, all of your documents then. And if you choose a document, it's going to give you the bibliographic information. And so what I've done, just in the interest of saving time, is I've actually created a collection within my personal library called the Microsoft Research Workshop Group, or just Workshop, sorry. And so I've added the paper that we had for pre-reading, this draft. And what I've done is I've added my any of the highlights of things that I found interesting and notes on top of it. Um, and what I've also, what I need to point out to check is that I've clicked the other settings of I do not want this to be uploaded and synced online because we were given the email that in the interest of um, it being a white paper, we're not going to share this. So that's great. Um, if I wanted to add additional articles, um, getting uh, information into Mendeley, Mendeley is very easy. You can drag and drop and or use any of the um, icons above to add documents singly or in folders. And so what it's going to do is it's going to pull in um, the specific articles for you and it's going to flag them if they need review in which you can edit any of the fields um, and add to. So I just wanted to give you a sense quickly there of how the workflow of working within Mendeley Desktop, the reference management piece of our software works. And so what happens actually when you've created this library then, the smart library, if you want to be able to access it online, um, you would choose to sync. And when you sync your data online, what this does in the system is it's going to aggregate across all the people that are using Mendeley. And so what this actually allows Mendeley to do is to create this more collaborative and transparent um, aspect of science in the sense that instead of how reference managers traditionally have worked in that they've siloed every researcher's information sets on their own computers and that information is not really shared in any way and with um, Mendeley what we're uh, what you do when you anonymously aggregate the data is that creates um, our cloud data in which we encourage people to build applications on top of and to use this data in addition we feed back that data to our community so we give them information about the trends in their discipline the most popular authors etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's where I'm kind of moving but as Peter also mentioned um, from PLOS, we had um, a recent uh, competition which was called our binary battle. And essentially, um, what it was was a call to the community to encourage development on top of our cloud data. And so we offered um, this incentive, this monetary prize um, of $10,001 for the top app that was built. And the winners of this contest are actually going to be announced uh, just at the end of next month, so November 30th. So definitely keep um, your eyes peeled for what's coming out of that um, project because I think there's a lot of really exciting things that people have started to develop and Peter mentioned a couple of them and I'm just going to also go over two really quick examples. And so this is our dev site. If you are a developer, feel free to visit here and um, join the community. 
Uh, but the, the two apps that I specifically wanted to talk about were readermeter.org, um, which is kind of a crowdsourced research impact site in which you can enter authors' names in and you can it pulls in the data from Mendeley and shows you the impact of um, that person's work um, in real-time social statistics. So if you were to then click on a paper that that person wrote, it will then break down into what disciplines of people are coming from that are reading this paper, what locations, and give you some of the really rich information there. Um, the second app that I want to mention uh, kind of brings in this idea of access to scholarly information. And so um, whether you're surfing on just you know the news or any other interest sites online, you can set up a WordPress plugin and it's for Chrome, and then what it will do is it will give you a bunch of Mendeley recommendations based on that site, and in the interest of time, um, I also just have a slide that shows that. Um, so this is just one example of what that looks like, and then you can link to the content within Mendeley, and um, if that content is freely available, you can add that to your library or add the reference directly to your library. Um, and so if we switch, to talk a little bit about uh, Mendeley Web and our catalog, what I wanted to talk about just is uh, some, a little bit of statistics first to show how much we are actually growing. And we have over 100 million documents uploaded in our system, and which makes up our catalog, uh, which is the world's largest crowdsourced research database to date. Um, and we have some of the, I just wanted to list some of the largest user bases there. And if we have a look at Mendeley Web and what the interface looks like, which is where I'm going now, I want to kind of focus more on the trends and statistics that we give to our users and skip over the social networking stuff because a lot of that is very familiar with, uh, people are very familiar with. So when you log on in that slide that I just showed you, it's going to give you recommendations to the side, so people you might know or papers that you might want to read based on um, your library. And if you were to find a paper or see something, um, that is interesting from that list, you can click on the paper and it will take you to our, our catalog entry. And what you'll notice on this page is there are multiple ways to get the content into your library and or um, to view uh, the PDF viewer. So we also work with publishers to offer these PDF previews um, to make available within our system. You can share the paper out and you also get the readership statistics. So again, embedded right on this page, it's gonna tell you more of the social statistics on it, and you will also, sorry, this one doesn't have um, the related research there, um, but you can also get related research that are listed and or any other public online groups that you might be interested in. And it's open access week, so I thought I might share a specific uh, group that exists on Mendeley that um, you know is a passion point for a lot of people, and so they've come together as a community, and there's two types of groups on Mendeley, public and private. So the private groups are a limited amount of people and you can actually share the content, whereas in the public groups, they're curated reading lists. So within this community, scholars in open science are saying, hey, you know what, these papers are important um, to the field or to, you know, uh, just in general, um, could be interesting. And so you can look at and or click on any of the papers that are involved here and you can see the readership associated with any of them. You can also just generally search our groups um, you can search by discipline, um, and when you go to a disciplinary page, it will show you active members within this discipline, allowing you to then potentially reach out to new colleagues, as well as other popular groups in which you can then find communities that you might also be um, interested in joining. And so, as a little bit of an experiment, if anyone is a member of Mendeley and or would like to take part in this, I've also just created an online group for the Microsoft workshop, um, and it's a public group. And so as we go throughout the workshop, um, feel free to add any scholarship that you feel is relevant and or um, you would like to promote. And I just added you know, six quick documents here, um, but feel free to take a look. And um, if you're interested in contributing, go ahead. It's a good way to kind of just get involved. And so I've got a little bit less than a minute, so I just want to quickly also talk about the fact that groups you can embed them in other pages, which is a really useful feature, um, and it allows for a little bit of value creation in the community. Um, and speaking of the community, we have this really rich population of people that are strong advocates for Mendeley and really want, um, they believe in the mission of opening up science, making it more collaborative and transparent, and so they are, they have joined what's called their advisors program and teach around the world um, about Mendeley. And so this is kind of just the summary side of the 
things that I've mentioned today, the specific pieces of the software, the desktop part, that's the reference management piece, bridged with this online aspect, both of social networking, as well as the uh, research catalog and the ability to build apps on top of the data that we're aggregating. And so where we're moving in the future is really this idea toward a semantically um, linked database and this human curated, constantly evolving library. And so these are kind of just a little bit of a taste of the future and the ideas that we want to promote. So I'll leave you with a little snippet of what Warner Verbals tweeted once about us. And my email is there, so if you have any other further questions.